So um, I hope you're all on the sofa, comfortable and uh, ready to go. So um, first session today is looking at um, how to automate your supply chain um, using a couple of elements that obviously been around for a very long time, EDI, which is electronic data interchange and e-commerce. So um, trading via a website. So I'm Matt, uh, I've worked at Techman for about 16 years, worked with Business Central, NAV, Navision for about 21 years. Um, so I'll be um, going through some of the first sections around um, EDI and e-commerce. And on the call as well, we have Alex. Alex is from a company called Sana. Um, he'll join in about halfway through. Alex, I'll let you, let you introduce yourself a bit later once you get to your slot. Um, but yeah, there's, there's two of us that will be presenting today. So first of all, just want to make sure that you can hear me, that everything is clear. Um, today will be, we'll be finished certainly before 10.30. Um, there's the next session starting then, so don't want to uh, kind of cross into that time. And if you could hold any questions to the end, please, uh, that'd be much appreciated. So what we're going to be covering today um, is, um, first of all, EDI. So what is it? What can it do for you? Then quick discussion around blockchain. So this is a relatively new technology. Um, it's, it's something that I feel will become the norm in terms of EDI and lots of other transactions as well um, and has a lot of potential really in the future. Then we'll look at um, e-commerce and specifically after that we'll go into one of the e-commerce solution that's out there um, one that we recommend and, and are a partner for which is sana um, so this is an e-commerce solution which is built specifically for dynamics business central and then questions at the end so let's first of all look at electronic data interchange edi um, so EDI started in the 1960s in America um, by the automotive industry where they wanted a, 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 an easier way of passing business messages between different organizations. So business messages, things like an order, an invoice, a shipment. That, that was um, pretty successful and, and shortly after that, US government um, and the food and beverage industry kind of jumped on the back of that. Um, and has used that ever since. And typically, automotive, um, aero industry, food and beverage tend to be, even today, the main kind of players around EDI. Uh, though we are seeing a lot more smaller organizations um, starting to use EDI as well. So in terms of what is a, a, an EDI message, so it can be between you, your customers, your suppliers, be that suppliers of, of products and materials or suppliers of services like third party logistics companies. So if you store your um, inventory off site um, and you want to pass messages to those, then, then a lot of those organizations can accept and deal with EDI messaging as well. So a typical scenario, maybe your customer sends a schedule, a forecast, they'll then send through an order you then perhaps, if, if you have that stock in a third party warehouse, um, or even, a, even if you don't have the stock, perhaps you send a purchase order to your supplier. Your supplier confirms they're shipping it to your third party warehouse, as in a message that goes to your third party warehouse so they know what to expect. They book it in, you get an electronic message, so it books it into your ERP system. You then want to pick it and ship it, you send a pick request to your third party company. They then um, ship it, you get a confirmation it's shipped, a message may go to your customer saying, yes, this is on its way, an ASN. So an ASN is advanced shipment notice, um, basically saying these goods are on their way. Um, that can also include um, SSCC labeling. So SSCC is serial shipping container codes. And basically what an SSCC code allows is a unique identifier for typically a pallet. You, 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 you ship the message to say what is um, on this pallet 
you know, what's the contents of it? And that might include batch numbering, serial numbering. So when your customer receives the goods, they just scan that one barcode that's on the pallet and they know already what should be on it and we'll just book that in. So there's a, the thing that, you know, in retail and food retail, people like Tesco, um, they they want ASNs because it saves them having to actually add that information um, along the way. So those are the different types of messages that we have. So when we go to an organization that's currently using EDI, what we find is that they um, may be trading via with their customers or suppliers. Um, often they'll have a set, be using a separate piece of software. So that might be some software that's loaded on a PC. It may be that they log on to a web portal um, or they're even receiving those EDI orders via email. And you know, typically one, maybe two parties are involved between that organization and their ultimate customer. And the setup of those um, kind of transactions and, and those agreements can be quite long winded. And, and you know, the, the IT people always um, raise their eyebrows when there's a new EDI partner to set up because you know, the, normally there's a reasonable amount of work and lengthy time involved to get that underway. Now, what we find is that typically with this process, this isn't integrated into the ERP system. So in effect, they'll receive the order, they'll print it off and they'll type it in to the ERP system. You, know, you may as well just receive a fax if that's going to be the case. There's, you know, there's, <clears throat> you're not gaining any advantage in using that technology. So what we've done is a, a little bit, um, I guess, more advanced. Um, first of all, is that we take on ownership of those EDI messages. So you tell us who you want to trade with. Um, if we are already trading, as in we have customers trading with that organization, we already have the mapping, the data, and the communication set up with those customers. Um, so those, that, those are very straightforward. If it's somebody we haven't dealt with before, we'll, we'll go and speak to those organizations and set all that information up. So the first thing you know is that you'll be receiving orders straight into your um, NAV stroke business central system without any human touch. Now, obviously this, you know, the benefit of this is that A, it takes away the pain of setting it up, but also um, the, the ease of receiving those orders, it, it just happens, they just appear. And obviously this means that the, the orders are um, accurate because there's no uh, rekeying errors. And obviously this takes away some cost in terms of people's time from entering those orders and invoices subsequently going back. This, this is backwards and forth. And it can also give you a competitive advantage as well. You know, you go into a new company, you say, yes, we can trade EDI. So, um, you know, it, that can really help because some organizations insist on it. Some organizations like it because it can save them a lot of time as well as yourself. So EDI is a in the background, we're kind of dealing with a lot of um, complexity. Um, so we, we try and take away all this from you. So this, this is just a few of the EDI standards. Um, it's a bit of a farce, really, that these are that's an initial 20 of the different standards, not particularly standard. Um, so luckily for ourselves, there only tends to be about two main ones that we normally see in terms of EDI standards. So it does make the process a little bit easier. And what we're doing is in effect mapping data from your supplier or your customer in terms of the way their systems work into a standard way that Business Central works. So this example here, on the right, we have a trader comms document. So that is a, a standard message within the EDI world. Um, although not every organization uses the same messaging in the same way. So sometimes certain, you know, I know B&Q might put certain data into some fields and Tesco will put a different piece of data in those fields. So what we have to do is map for that particular organization, how that data is structured and map into the fields on the left hand side within Business Central. So and anywhere where there is a bit of purple, there is normally some interpretation, calculation, um, conversion going on to make that data uh, map into Business Central. So once we've done that for an organization, 
when the next customer of ours comes along says we want to trade with B and Q, we can say, yep, yeah, we've already got that mapping, that's straightforward. And finally, here's, here's some of the um, EDI organizations that we are trading with. Um, well, we don't trade, we pass the data with. We trade on, obviously, pass that data on your behalf. So um, there's around about 75 there. I think we're up to over 100 now. Um, a whole variety of building products, organizations, food, um, third party logistics, company you know, like Kalina, Schenker, um, wholesalers uh, and, and some major uh, manufacturers, Procter & Gamble there, Reckitt, there's, there's various organizations that we can deal with. As long as they can deal and, and trade in EDI, then we can. OK, so that's a kind of uh, a touch on EDI. There's, there's nothing to show because it all kind of travels through the ether. The next thing I want to talk about is blockchain. So this is something that's um, kind of fairly new to the business world, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what is blockchain? So this is a, a new way of communicating between different parties. And it's it's a highly secure and open way of, of transacting. And it's, it's different to, you know, kind of what we used to. So EDI sends a message, it leaves somewhere, it arrives somewhere else, and that's it, it's done. With blockchain, in effect, you create a series of transactions that layer on top of each other, and that whole chain, in effect, describes the transaction between one party and another. So a lot of financial organizations have, have jumped onto this and, and um, you know, are using this now. Um, cryptocurrencies use it. So um, Bitcoin is, is you know, the, the back kind of end of Bitcoin is driven via blockchain. So you know, Bitcoin gets some bad press, but actually the, the technology behind it is, is ultra secure, you know, more so than um, any other kind of transactional methods that banks are using at the moment. Good example of, of um, a blockchain, uh, Walmart in the US, um, they've been using it since 2016 and they use it to track pigs um, from China to America. And, and in effect, what you do is that you set up a, a network of people that are allowed within that chain and they add their elements, their transactions to that chain. So it that goes all the way from grower to um, to, to distributor, to the handling organizations, to shipping, receiving, transport, and, and finally, you know, just receiving into the, the relevant organizations within America. And each party can add their transaction to that process. And the, to add it, they also have to be accepted by the other parties that it is a valid transaction. So it's, it's very secure in terms of, uh, it, you, know, you get buy-in from everybody that those transactions are correct. And the, the information isn't actually stored in one place. It, it's, it's distributed amongst different, all the parties' ledgers, in effect. So what you can do is go back and see the entire history. You can't amend any of those transactions. You know, it's, it's, it's a write-only once process, so it's very open. And this could, you know, well, another example is diamond traders are using it as well. So they're also using it to trace, you know, for authenticity, um, from the mines all the way through to the uh, diamond traders. And that is then available. And so if you buy a, a ring, let's say, and you want proof of its authenticity, they can invite you into the, in effect, the, the chain, and you can then see the history of that. So it, it's something that is, is, is very different to things like EDI, but I do think it will replace EDI in terms of um, messaging. Um, you know, this could, this could be a, a supply chain kind of ledger that goes from the raw material all the way through to the final product. Um, yeah, and that, and that, yeah, that can be the entire process from, you know, right from the very beginning all the way through to um, final supply. So especially things in things like food where, you know, at the moment, the, the, the kind of chain of, of um, command of, of tracking produce through the food chain um, it kind of lives with each individual organization. Whereas if all that can be joined together and the consumer can go along with a product, 
scan it with an app on their phone and they can see all the way down the chain as to where that came from just to you know for certainty that it is a um you know the, the source of, of that product so the, the kind of steps in terms of the way it works is that um, a transaction is requested and that produces a block and that's um, almost a request of a block that is then broadcast to the different nodes of the network so the people that are involved in that entire um, process those will then validate it excuse the dog in the background and um, that will then accept the transaction and that will then create a block which will then produce the transaction and that can be whether it's just verification of uh, that something's happened it can be financial so it could be yes the product has been shipped we've received it we've we, we've all there can invoice it yes we've received your invoice we can now pay it so that whole set of transactions could be classed as a blockchain and and the end-to-end -end, um, process can kind of be seen and stored in there so that's, that's blockchain Let, let's now move on to um, e-commerce so e-commerce is, is probably got a bit hotter over the last uh, few weeks. Um, you know, the need for a consumers to purchase online obviously is a bit, has been critical over the last few weeks, uh, but also the ability for where, where people are working from home and there isn't an office um, and their suppliers may be working from home and they don't have an office number to call and maybe the phone systems don't support them particularly well in that home working scenario. Then e-commerce has really helped businesses um, taking orders online, you know, simply uh, without having to, uh, you know, without having to have the need of somebody physically sat there waiting to take your call. So, if you look in an e-commerce um, solution, some, some key considerations really, and, and, and Alex will um, from Sana will go into this as well, is is obviously first thing, can your customers find you? So if you if you're going B to C, so business to consumer. Um, you know, typically they'll start with a, a search in Google or or Bing. Um, so you know, it, it needs to be a, a website which is um, has some strengths in, in its ability to search. Um, certain template, you know, cheaper templated sites tend to not be so Google friendly because they're just one of a bunch of millions and um, tend to don't tend to be quite successful in that area. User experience is, is very important. Um, you know that, that there's nothing nothing worse than a poor designed website. Um, you know, I think people can get frustrated very quickly and just click away and, and, and go somewhere else. Also cross um, platform and browser support is important. So if I'm sat there on my mobile phone, I want just as good as experience as if I'm on a laptop or if I'm on a tablet. So that's that's something that you need to make sure the software supports well, because it's, it's very important. Integration is a key one. Um, you know, if you're selling product online, um, you know, there, there needs to be key information which is up to date and you don't want to have to be manually entering, updating this information. So things like stock availability, pricing, um, you know, you might have consumer pricing but if I log on as a business account I want to see my pricing so that that's that's where the integration between your ERP system and your e-commerce solution is very important automation so the the ability for that integration to just happen um, you know orders just appear within your ERP system you, you don't want to have to be there pressing buttons because again it just adds cost and time um, to that process Self-service, so um, again, especially important, you know, more so at the moment, but has always been an important one where, you know, uh, I as a business want to buy product from my supplier. Um, my day-to-day my -day role is, is very busy and I, you know, struggle sometimes to find the time to do that. Therefore, I might get home, have, have my dinner and then sit down and actually spend half an hour to an hour just tidying up, finishing off some stuff that I didn't manage to do in the day. And that might include placing some orders with my suppliers. So having a website and, and having the ability to, as a business to business transaction to log on, process orders, 
in my own time without my supplier having to be there is very beneficial. But it also can mean being able to log on to my account and see um, what my outstanding balance is and go and look at some invoices and you know, without having to ring up, ask for a copy of an invoice. It's just there. I, I can go and do that myself. And more and more people uh, want to be able to do that, but, you know, rather than having to pick up the phone and, and talk to somebody and ask, ask for somebody to get that information to them. Finally, the total cost of ownership. Um, you know, when choosing an e-commerce solution, you, you don't just look at the software price. Um, there is a lot of other potential costs that can live around that. Um, be, be it design of, of, of the website, that, that can be a bottomless pit of money. Is um, if, if you want to keep changing and, and um, doing some very uh, clever things in terms of design of websites, uh, but also integration as well. You know, you, you need to make sure it is there. Um, so it's not just the software costs and, and the ongoing costs you need to think about as well. In terms of you know, some example um, solutions that are out there. Uh, first one I picked was you know, there's a lot out there. So yeah, th this isn't an exhaustive list. So GoDaddy is a typical kind of um, sole trader a uh, very small business starting point. Shopify is, is a, um, has had a lot of success recently. Um, there are integrations there for Business Central. We've got a few customers using it. It's great if you want to get a presence on the internet in terms of trading quickly um, and fairly straightforward. You know, there's, there's a few connectors out there that you can download that uh, you know, give you a Give you a connection to your to your website. You know, give product information, some basic pricing capability, and can take an order. But it, but it, yeah, they tend to be somewhat limited. But it's it's a good starting point for a lot of people. Magento has been around for a while. Uh, tends to be the the uh, choice of software for the designers. So if if you want something. You know, if you're selling um, clothing or something that you want a lot of kind of flair in your website, the Magento is, is very good at that. Um, but again, to do that can cost a lot of money. You know, I've, I've known a couple of customers spend uh, six figures in, in um, Magento consulting and design and integration. So, um, you know, it's very flexible. Um, one of the issues we find from an integration point is that everyone's different. Um, you know, there's no standard way of doing it. And finally, obviously, hence why Alex is on the call, um, is Sana. Um, so these guys know Business Central very well. You know, that they are Business Central partners as well as e-commerce specialists. So that they, they've kind of got the best of both worlds. And what we find is their product is it just does you know a lot of the functionality that you need. The integration really is where you're you're gaining a lot of um, expertise on both sides of the fence. And so um, say no more on Sana. So I'll actually like to hand over to Alex, who's going to run through some of the features of Sana. Right. So today. Um, I'm just going to take you through um, our startup presentation uh, with Chapman um, around streamlining your supply chain processes and really um, how you can utilize um, our solution to really improve the customer's buying experience. So my name is Alex Jennings Semple and I'm the Partner Alliance Manager for the UK and Ireland for SANA. Um, we are, we're a Dutch-owned business, headquartered in Rotterdam, um, but we've got offices all around the globe, um, so we don't just operate in the UK, um, and our office is based out of Manchester. I'm actually based at home at the moment in Southampton, um, and the sun is shining, which is great. Um, so I'm just going to take you a little bit through what is SANA, um, and we, we did a, um, a survey out to about 500 B2B buyers um, about some of the trends um, that we're seeing out there um, and some of the feedback that they gave us about um, you know, decisions they make when they're, they're identifying B2B companies to deal with um, and really how we can help. And then we're going to end with a product showcase. Um, I don't want to obviously go through loads of slides with you, so I'd, I'd really like to show you how the integration works between Sana and Business Central. So I will um, make sure we get to that as quickly as we can. 
So, um, like I already mentioned, we are a um, certified Microsoft partner. We're a gold partner as well. Um, our software is all hosted on the Azure platform as well. Um, so, we're, we're very integrated into Microsoft and we are one of their key ISVs. And we're a Microsoft um, ISV of the year as well for Western Europe. Um, obviously, we work across the whole uh, Microsoft platform, so not just Business Central. Um, with F and O um, and all of the um, other solutions that are out there as well. So we are basically a fit for all flavors of their, their offerings out on the market. Um, we work across multiple industries, so there's no specific focus. Um, like Matt mentioned, you know, with regards to Magento and some of those sort of maybe fashion houses that are looking at really um, fancy looking front end um, design stores, etc. Um, we are very much focused um, around B2B. OK, so unlike the, the B2C capacity and capabilities that might be out there with regards to some top end heavy Magento stores, um, we just want to make sure that we can use the data you've got to actually replicate your business processes by just plugging something in that's just going to work um, with little um, amount of, you know, add on integration, ABI integrations and development around that. Um, we're very focused on manufacturing, wholesale, retail and distribution. And you can see from here, like I said, we don't pigeonhole ourselves into a specific area because we can win across multiple industries. So we will fit depending on um, obviously what you require. So like I mentioned um, earlier, at the back end of 2019, we surveyed, uh, it was about 500 in the end, um, B2B buyers. Um, and really, this is just a little snippet, top level summary of some of the feedback that we actually received from those guys. Um, so the first bit here, so suppliers, wholesalers, manufacturing, not meeting their customers going to mind. So about 30% of the buyers um, who came back to us would be would prefer to buy at least 90% of their products online. Um, at the minute, those guys said only 19% are currently doing that. So there's a lot of scope there um, to increase these numbers. But what, what the feedback was, they actually do want to purchase more online. But with regards to things that can stop them doing that, it could be the complexity of the orders that want to place because obviously B2B buyers will have different needs to B2C um, and they might have complex ordering processes that can't be handled um, by a lot of sites um, and that is something that we work very hard on to make sure like I said earlier we can actually replicate um, the way that they would do business with you over the phone or via a salesperson um, to make sure that our sites can um, to, to actually be able to provide that service for them. Also, a quarter um, of those wanted easier and faster checkout. Um, the ability to do repeat ordering to save time, especially if you've got um, people placing 100, 200 line orders to actually go back into a website and having to key those orders in every time you want to do it, um, rather than just um, phoning up or emailing and saying, oh, can I just order this again? Um, you know, they want that facility. Um, quicker delivery processing as well, and obviously all that improved order tracking um, is really, really key sort of experience that they're looking for at the moment. Um, and that's something that obviously that we focus on as a priority with the integration that we have. 75% um, of products have been bought online. So out of the people we talk to who are doing the majority of their ordering online, they do have the ability to purchase 75% of those products online as well. So we have got a very deep seated role within that B2B buying process. And e-commerce is something that only is prevalent now. It has been in the past. Um, and due to obviously the new normal, we, we expect and we have seen these trends um, increasing upwards as well. But it's been kind of, kind of even more prevalent moving forward. So a third of the buyers um, that we talk to um, would be persuaded to actually choose a vendor um, depending on their self-service ability. So I think it comes back to the sort of, you know, um, Amazon mentality, should we say. Um, I know I can I can go on the website, I can have a look, I can track my orders, I can see everything I've all, ever ordered, I can arrange a return, I can do everything for myself. I've never had the need to phone anybody. Um, now, some people, may not necessarily want or like that kind of relationship. However, it's easy to look at the sort of customer base that we're working with at the moment and the sort of people we are as individuals to actually the sort of people who are entering this market uh, with regards to 
I hate to say that I'm old. I did turn 40 last Friday. Um, the younger generations, I will put it out there. So the sort of the younger buyers who are coming into this market who haven't haven't known anything apart from an online universe that they that they live in um, and operate in, they will expect to be able to do everything that they can online rather than having to pick up the phone or having to send um, multiple emails um, and things like that. So I think it's really important not only just to serve your current customer base to make sure you you offer these services, but it's also to attract new customers, attract new staff. Um, and, and also within those businesses, people will leave and younger people will come in. And we just need to make sure that we're relevant and keeping up with the times of what people actually expect from us as well. Um, access to information, like I said already, so 62% prefer accessing that information online. 20% um, of those prefer offline, but like I said, we are going to see those figures changing a lot um, within the next sort of, you know, three, five to 10 years, so that those figures will adjust as well. And half of the people we asked um, will conduct web searches as well. So like Matt mentioned, it's all right to have a website. It's good to have a web store. It's good to have that online presence, but if, if it's not a good presence, then actually it could do more harm than good. If people land on the site and it's difficult to navigate around, difficult to find, not enough information, um, then they will just drop that, close it straight away and, and move elsewhere. So we really do need to make sure that we can really sort of rein those customers in when they actually land on the site and make it engaging and make sure it's got everything that they would expect to find on there. But this is really one of the things that is probably one of the most important things on here really is the the errors between non-integrated um, ERP systems and web stores. Um, all the errors impacting the profitability, efficiency and productivity of sales um, organisations and 44 um, percent. So, you know, nearly half of the people we talk to of the, the buyers experience online order errors with their top 10 suppliers every two weeks. Um, and these things can be, you know, corrected, obviously, but there's a lot of work and, and admin that goes in, in the background to actually sort these things out um, where we see, well, obviously, with our solution, the benefits, because we leverage the information in the ERP system. We know that the customer is getting the right pricing, they're getting the right level of stock, their addresses are all recorded in there. It really does cut down um, the sort of errors that would happen with a non-integrated solution. So there's some of the, the sort of trends that we saw from the, um, the survey that we did. Um, and just to clarify that, um, what a customer wants, they want information, they want to be able to check stock, they don't expect to actually have to call in. Um, they want this information at their finger, fingertips 24-7. Um, you know, they want to be able to see relevant offers, but not just offers that's available to everybody, um, because some of your larger clients will have different offers to some of your smaller clients. So when they log in, they want to see what's relevant to them. The correct pricing, like I already mentioned, um, you know, they want to make sure that when they're going in, the pricing is relevant to them. So if they've got specific pricing discounts or maybe special sales arrangements with yourself, then when they log in, they want to make sure that they have those um, pricing arrangements, for instance. I had a, an instance recently where I actually had to go and get some um, new glasses, and that's when um, everything locked down and spec savers um, rushed out there and they got their, um, they got a website. They've never sold glasses online. Um, however, I get contact lenses, so I get discount because I get um, I'm a, a subscription for them and they had no way to process um, that discount through the website. So I actually had to spend half an hour on the phone to someone in store um, who was trying to process my, my order you know, through their normal system. It was a pain, I didn't want to have to do that, but it, it, again, these are the sorts of things that I would expect as a, as a consumer and B2B, it's even more important because time is an issue. Shipment updates, so I want to be able to go track those as well, which is really key. And like I said, 24-7 ordering. Um, I can only phone up and place orders between nine and five. I can send emails um, after those hours and they'll, they'll get picked up the next day and processed or maybe the day after. 24-7 um, ordering, as long as I can replicate my business online, um, then I can make sure that I can um, uh, service my clients that way. So how can Sana help you meet your customers' needs? So we have a fully integrated solution into Business Central. So we work in kind of a different way. It's, it's like a three-way party project, should we say, 
uh, between us, Techman and yourselves. So we install Sana directly into Business Central. So we've got access to all of the products, all of the pricing, customers, order history, uh, but it uses the Business Central product as actually the engine to drive that online experience. So Sana do not go out and just um, sell and, and build um, standalone websites and web stores that people can integrate different systems to or just manage themselves. We don't. We purely rely on that ERP data to make sure that all of the things I've just mentioned are then brought through into the web store. But actually, you only have to manage one system. So we have a really quick and smart integration process into Business Central. There's only one system to maintain, um, including all the customizations. You can leverage your existing ERP data because that is the thing. That is the thing that powers your business. You don't have to take all of that information out of what you're already doing and then replicate that in a different system, manage those two systems to make sure that you have that online presence. Use what you've got already because that is the key data. Um, and again, this allows you to manage all of your, the customer's needs online as well. Now, that makes us different to the rest of the market because the rest of the market uh, with a typical kind of interface solutions is you'll have Business Central and then you'll have your various API plugins in here. So all of those have to be developed and actually pull that information through. Um, in some systems, you can import CSV files, for example, to that CR CMS tool um, to update the information, but that's time consuming. Um, and it's open to errors as well, because you're keying information from one system into something else and then importing it somewhere else. Um, so the main scenario, the difficulty is maintaining multiple systems um, to make sure that everything that's displayed to your customers is 100% correct. Um, with ours, like I said, that's the difference between an integrated and an interface solution, which is where SAM is unique. So that is basically whatever happens in your web store um, will happen instantly, um, sorry, in your ERP, happen instantly in the shop. And also when anything is placed, like quotes and orders, et cetera, actually in the shop itself, will appear straight away in the ERP system with all of the correct pricing for that individual. So this is kind of our philosophy then. So instead of maintaining all of those separate systems, you just need to maintain one, and that is your ERP system. So Business Central drives the shop. So how you can benefit then? Automatic real-time data communication between the web store and ERP. So no manual data entry, it saves employee time, cuts costs for the company, um, and the integration can also speed up that order fulfillment cycle. There's no manual errors, no one's keying in any, any information or any orders or quotes, et cetera, directly into the ERP system, which means it's coming straight through and the customer's got full visibility of that. Um, increasing self-service functionality, you know, we've already mentioned giving them access to inventory status, orders and tracking, etc. That doesn't only improve customer service, but it can actually reduce the amount of time and effort required from you and your client sales and customer service teams as well, which is really key. Access to all the correct sales, pricing, inventory information, stock information, etc. Um, if the stock level is, is live in the ERP system, it's going to show that in the store. So you don't have to worry about that mismatch of data. Um, and we do have the ability, because we're tracking all of that information online, we've got fast, accurate generation of all of those financial reports. So you can produce balance sheets, p &L statements, trial balances, much, much faster um, directly using that information. OK, there's a huge amount of benefits to be had um, using this type of solution. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm just going to go into the product itself um, and actually show you how this integration works. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen One second. And if I just share. So this is just um, an example um, store that I'm going to show you at the moment. So this is our, our Maddox store. Um, I'm not going to go through today um, all of the customization options because, you know, we have tem templated web stores and this, this is a typical out the box template that we've built. But we've got so many customization options, you can really make the store um, look and feel however you want. So I'm not going to necessarily go into the design of this itself. It's really to show you um, the kind of B2B functionality and, and how it integrates with Business Central. So all of these um, 
all of these like headings in here can be controlled by yourself. Um, and we can see all of these um, products have come through. Um, if I actually click in and look at notebooks, for instance, um, all of this information like um, on the left hand side, like color, material, operating system, screen size, all of these various information here is actually coming through from the actual attributes within Business Central next to the product itself. So as long as you're using the product cards and storing all the attributes, they will pull straight through into the web store itself. Um, we've got all of our various products in here um, and I have the ability to add to cart. Um, we can view sort of, you know, single line view, but we've also got grid table view in here as well. So I can just switch to a grid um, and view it in various different ways. So again, we can customize all those types of elements as well. But due to the fact this is kind of like a, if I found the web store and you did want it open to B2C, this is kind of what it would look like. Um, so we could just go and compare products, add to cart, et cetera, um, directly through here. Um, however, the real power I want to show you is the difference when actually we have a login area of this. And also just to let you know, if you, if you don't want to have this kind of, they find my website, they can log in and, and people can just buy directly from the web store and you're just looking for purely B2B, that is fine. You can actually lock this down so that you would actually have to log in to be able to see any products or do anything at all. Um, so it's basically like a closed site. This is this one demonstration is actually omni-channel, so this is B2C and B2B. Okay. Um, I'm just going to log in then, um, and I'm just going to put in my username and password. So this is Dave then. So once Dave has logged in, um, firstly, if we go to the home screen, you can actually customize content uh, for when specific customers log in. Now, Dave uh, mainly buys um, desk um, sort of notebooks and things. So when he logs in, I've customized that front banner um, and you can put sort of personalized messages in there as well. So it's very customer centric um, so they can see everything that's relevant to them. Um, but if we go back to the screen we just looked at and I'll go through to notebooks, we see here some things have changed. Firstly, um, I'm showing stock. So um, I didn't show my B2C via stock, um, but I can show my B2B via stock. So you can turn this functionality off or on. You can also do things like, do you want to show them how many you've got in stock? Or actually, do you just want to say if it's out of stock um, or low stock, et cetera? So you can change all that kind of functionality in there. But we can also see instead of just adding one um, and just adding to cart, I've now got the ability to just do a plus and minus. Because as a B2B functionality, I'm not just probably going to be buying one product. I'm going to be buying multiple things. Um, so we make that a lot easier in here as well. Um, and then you can just select the numbers and just add to cart and they're all added. If we go and select variants, if you've got variants against various products within your business, we can um, do that as well. Um, also, one thing to mention, we do work with um, configuration tools like Econ. So if you've got um, very complex, um, you know, functionality within the ordering process and you've got various different parts, etc., that need to be added, then we can manage all of that as well just by adding various um, econ add-ons so we can manage that. Um, but we can also manage the variants. I can see that they've been selected and I'm just going to add those into the card itself. So I've added a bunch of things into my cart. So if I go up to the top, um, I can just go and view the shopping cart in here and we can see all of those items have been added. Um, we can also see that from a B2B um, login, I've actually can search the product in here. So if I know what I'm buying, do I really want to browse it like I would, you know, as an end consumer? Because I know exactly what I want to buy. So I can just type in um, the name, like model number, model name, whatever it might be. And that will just go and find it from here. And then I can just choose how many I want to buy and add to cart. So I can actually do everything from here. Now, what you'll see here is it's just prompted me to recalculate the shopping cart price because this customer might have specific pricing, they might have volume discount or special offers on specific products, whatever's actually within the RP on their customer card is pulled through. So I can just go and recalculate that. So I've just added something else to my cart and that will basically adjust any discount that would need to be applied. Okay, so all of that functionality is in there. We can also do things like save as a template. So if I've just put in 200 lines and I know that in a month's time I want to order something similar, um, then I can just save that as a template. And next time I come in, I can just go load that template back up again. OK, we've also got the ability to get quotes as well. So we could do that from there. 
I'm not going to do that in this example because I really want to show you a different site to show you how the integration works, OK? Um, but they are some of the key things from a B2B side. Also, if I actually go up and have a look at my account, um, this is what the My Account section looks like. So I can come directly in here and see all of my orders. Um, I can see the status of all of those orders from there as well. And if I click the view details, I can actually go and see all of the details and I can edit. I could put a reorder in there, just download that, print it off, save it um, outside the system, do whatever I need to on that. We've also got all of my quotes, so I can see all my quotes, if they've expired, what the status of them are. Um, all of my invoices are also recorded in here. So this is what we talked about earlier. This is the self-service um, functionality that is very high on the list of expectations from a web store itself. Um, and in here, if I go view the details, for instance, around an invoice, we've got the option to return orders. So I can click return order in here. And then if it had multiple lines on this order, you could just select the specific product that needs to be returned. And then I can select the return reason. And all of those return reasons are the return reasons that are listed in Business Central. So they are pulled straight through to here and we can add, add attachments and, and complete those return requests. So you can see actually the sort of things I would normally have to email in about or phone up about and chase. Um, I've actually got full visibility of everything like that within my own account. OK, which is really key. And another thing to mention just while we're on here um, is this doesn't only show the information that has actually been, um, you know, bought, bought through the web store itself. For instance, you might 40 percent of your business might come through your web store, but 60 percent is dealt with by sales guards or over the phone or via email. Um, so on a typical interface to web store, it would only show the information that actually was done through the actual web store itself. But because we pull the information directly out of the ERP system, um, this will pull through every single quote invoice order that has been put on that customer card. So this is actually a fully customer portal that's got all of the information from the ERP system in it, not that's just been placed through the web store itself, which I think is really key. Also, one other thing to mention just while we're on this particular web store is you do also have the ability to log in um, from a sales point of view. So if I log in as um, sales. So I'm now logged in as a sales agent. So this is um, Steve. So I might be out on the road visiting customers. I might be sat in front of the customer. Um, I can just go on to, to the web store itself. Um, and then if I log in um, as a sales agent and click represent customer, it will bring through all of the customers that I look after. So this is my account list. So I can be sat, in, sat with these guys, hit select, um, and now I'm through to the view that they would see when they log in. So I can actually see everything that they would. OK, all of their pricing agreements, invoices and everything like that. So the salespeople within the organization can actually use the web store as a sales tool rather than just pointing customers in that direction. OK, so that's really key as well. So what I want to quickly show you just before we end this um, demonstration today and I hand you back to Matt is just I'm just going to add a quick order in here um, and show you how that information comes through into Business Central. So I'm just going to go into office chair within here um, just to make sure that I'm logged in. So we're just going to log in again. So we're now logged in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, right, I'm going to have 100 of that, 100 of those chairs. Uh, I'm not going to go into to loads of details. I'm going to have 100, add them into my cart. And then if I go to view the shopping cart within here, they are there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go and get a quote. Um, so I'm just going to get a quote for this. Um, now this is a single page quote screen. You can have multiple pages, so you can really customize what these look like. Um, and I'm just going to say, this is a uh, Techman reference. Um, and then the comment, um, you know, can I have 5% more discount? Easy. No, but I'm just going to pop that in there and then I'm just going to say get a quote. And there you go, that has been processed. So what we'll see now, uh, if I just refresh uh, my business central here. So if I go into my open sales quotes then, and just sort on the date in here, We'll now see the quote is now there. OK, so that's quote has come straight through. So if I go to just view that. 
So what we can see in here, if I go to quote, I can have a look at the comments and I can see that they've asked for some discount. Again, it's not what's saying I have to go and give that. But if I wanted to go and allow that um, discount or add that in or do anything that I want to this, um, I can just come through. I could add, change unit prices. I can basically amend whatever I want in here. But I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to go and give them uh, that 5%. OK, so that is now done in Business Central. And then if we come back to the web store and go to the quote page, our quote is now listed in here and I can go and see that that 5% has been added to the quote. And you can see how quick that was. It's live. There's no waiting or delay. I can see it straight away. Um, so once I'm happy with that, I say, well, OK, well, that's what I wanted. I'm going to go and convert that to an order. Um, and then we can say, OK, this is going to be our order. And, and then I'm just going to take the comment out and then just hit submit order. So that order has now been processed and placed. So if we come back into Business Central, I'm just going to come out the quotes. We're going to go into our open sales orders. Um, and what we'll see now is da, da, da. there you go. That order has now come through. And that was instant. OK, so there's no delay. It's using all the information from the customer card as in all their addresses when I'm going through that checkout process. And all of that information has come to and fro um, and from a customer's point of view. That's the experience they're going to receive. And from your point of view, um, again, all of that information has come straight through from the web store um, and it's all fully integrated. So, you know, all the information is correct from that end. And that's really how Sana and Business Central work together um, and how the integrated web store that we offer is different to a typical interface solution that's out there on the market. Thank you very much um, for your time um, and listen to me on that. And I'm just going to pass you back over to Matt right now. That's great, Alex. Thank you very much. Um, very interesting. I love the integration, how uh, seamless it is within uh, Sana, um, the account portal. Um, I think it's a great feature as well as the um, representing the customers. Nice little uh, feature in there as well. So, yeah, thank you very much for that.